Hey guys, my name is Britt and welcome to my channel. So today's video is not going to be what you expect. I had originally planned on doing a DIY on an office chair that I use at my small group table and it was a total failure. Um, I thought about not even posting this video, but then I realized that my mistakes, hopefully somebody else can watch and learn from. You may have seen a few weeks ago on Instagram, I posted these really adorable, super soft pillows that I found for one dollar at the Salvation Army. They are originally from Pier 1 Imports, so I know that these were probably at least 20 bucks a piece. They're definitely pretty worn. You can see there's a huge hole in this pillow, but originally my plan was to wash them, stitch up the holes, and use them for my reading center. However, this year they are still not allowing pretty much any sort of fabric or cloth material um, for the students to use. So no pillows, no rugs, no stuffed animals, anything that just can't be wiped down at the end of the day, we can't use. But I love these pillows so much, I am determined to figure out a way to use them. I have this old rolling chair that I actually um, did a DOI project for about 10 years ago in my very first classroom, and it is obviously in major need of an upgrade. So what I think I'm going to do is use the fabric from these pillows and reupholster this chair and I don't know, we'll see if it works. Worst case scenario, this totally fails and I'm out $2 in the pillows. If you're interested in doing a similar project for your classroom, I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through the steps on how it works and show you the tools that you need to get the job done. For a project like this one, you're gonna need some needle nose pliers to help remove any staples, a screwdriver of some sort, a staple gun, some scissors, and the fabric of your choice. So the first thing I started doing was removing the original fabric. I don't really think this step is totally necessary and I realized that kind of as soon as I got started. I think if the fabric is really, really old or in very bad shape, you probably need to take it off. But I went ahead and just left it on there because I mean, it was gonna be covered up anyway. So that's totally up to you. You make that decision based on the quality of the existing fabric. So assuming you're keeping the original fabric on the chair, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is remove any of the screws that actually attach the cushions to the chair body itself. So next step is to get this um, with the new fabric on. Now, as you can see, there's like these little sharp teeth. The back part of the chair, I'm gonna need to just very tightly pull and snap the fabric through these teeth. This part though, I'm gonna need the staple gun for. But I'm gonna do this part first since I know that the pillows, the size is gonna fit this. So I'm gonna do this part first.
Now that my fabric is cut to size, I am going to be poking the fabric through the little teeth all around the perimeter of the cushion. Now the corner parts are actually a little bit tricky because you have to kind of fold sort of like you would like if you were making a, um, a wonton. I don't really, I'm not really good at making wontons, but um, you kind of do like this little fold over as you get to the corners to prevent the fabric from bunching up. I love it so so much just imagine it done and on the back of this chair that gorgeous velvet oh my gosh I love it so the back was quite the arm workout it took a lot of tugging and pulling but all of this stuff will totally be covered up um, and it looks like I need to pull this corner a little bit more so you won't even see any of that because it's gonna be screwed in to those two holes in the back. Got a little problem. Um, I laid down the cushion on the second pillow. This is the whole spread of it, front and back. And this part, no problem, I have plenty of fabric. But I am not gonna have enough to cover the front and the back of the chair. So what I think I'm gonna have to do is take the extra fabric from the first um, pillow. This is what was left over. I think I might have to stitch it um, together right here and use it um, like this, if that makes sense. So that way I'll be able to wrap it around the whole cushion. So I do have a sewing machine. Um, I rarely ever use it, to be honest with you. I really can do like no more than a straight stitch. My mom would kill me if she knew that I said that because she spent a lot of time teaching me how to sew and I just don't use it. So anyway. Well, if you've ever done a DIY project, you know that things happen and things don't always go like you thought they would. So it turned out that the tag and the huge seam from the pillow is actually right in the middle where my butt would be sitting. So no, not comfortable and obviously it looks terrible. So um, my seam that I stitched on there looks pretty good, I gotta say, but I'm gonna have to redo this whole thing um, to make it work. At this point in the project, I feel like I have come up with a really good solution. I fixed the seam, everything looks pretty good. Um, so then I start stapling it to the chair cushion. Now obviously you have to get the fabric really tight on there um, just so it looks professional or as professional as you could possibly make it. Um, but I failed to remember the seam that's going straight down the the center of the cushion and as i was pulling and tugging the seam was moving and so when i flip it over you'll see that the the seam is not completely straight down the center of the cushion i mean it's really not that big of a deal i would be sitting on it anyway but you'll see the rest
Oh my goodness. At this point in the project, I am just ready to quit y'all. So when I stitch the three pieces of fabric together, there's a huge hole in the back and over time, this hole is just going to get bigger. So I know that it's not going to work. Um, the seam that goes down the middle because I pulled and tugged so hard, it ended up not even being straight. That part doesn't even really bother me, to be honest. It's mainly the hole in the back that I know is not going to work. So really, I just need fabric that is wide enough to completely cover the bottom of this chair for a project like this to have worked. Time stops when we're alone. You got my love. Don't let it go. Feels like we're paper thin. One step away from caving. This should not be this hard. Just FYI. All in all, this did not turn out how I originally expected it to. In my head, I just had this vision of like the velvet being seamless and it just working out perfectly with the pillowcases, but it didn't and that's okay. Um, like I said, luckily it only cost me $2 for the pillows themselves. Um, but I think, actually I don't think I know, if the fabric were long enough and wide enough, this would have worked perfectly. Having those seams down the middle and the back of the cushion just did not work. I am going to retry this again. I'm going to have to go to like Hobby Lobby and get some different material and try it out. But who knows, second time might be the charm. It doesn't always work on the first go around and that's okay. So I hope you found this video not only <laughs> interesting, but I hope it helps you out um, if and when you try a similar project on your own. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you go ahead and do that. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Bye.